But if it's murderous menace you're after, where better than in the adventures of the most famous detective of all time? I'll tell you, Watson, this time we've met a foeman who's worthy of our steel. I can only wish you better luck in Devonshire, but I'm not easy on my mind. About what? About sending you. It's an ugly business, Watson. An ugly, dangerous business. The more I see of it, the less I like it. Sherlock Holmes in action again, impersonated this time by an erstwhile Doctor Who, Tom Baker. Prime factor in the case, the most famous gigantic hound of all time, the Hound of the Baskervilles. The Conan Doyle novel is the current Sunday afternoon serial on BBC One in an adaptation by Alexander Barron. The Hound, you remember, has haunted a luckless Devon family since the 17th century when the evil Sir Hugo Baskerville, so Holmes is told early in the story, invoked supernatural aid to gain his immoral ends. One night, he kidnapped an innocent country girl and took her to Baskerville Hall for his foul passions. The girl escaped. Sir Hugo pursued her. It is said that he cried aloud, I swear before all this company that I will this very night render my body and soul to the powers of evil if I may but overtake the wench. And so he did. The shepherd, crazed with fear, saw him ride past. But worse, there ran, mute behind him, such a hound of hell as man had never seen. And now, as Dr. Mortimer, played by Will Knightley, relates, another Baskerville has been found dead. Near him are those famous footprints. Has the hound returned? And will it attack the Baskerville heir, Sir Henry by name, and newly arrived from America? Holmes and Watson, Terence Rigby plays the staunch, if obtuse, physician, are getting to grips with such clues as the disappearance of two odd shoes, the arrival of a menacing anonymous note, a bearded stranger haunting Baker Street in a handsome cap, but I think we can trust Holmes and his mere charm to get to the bottom of the mystery. At any rate, H.R.F. Keating, the critic and novelist, and author of a study of Holmes and his world, has been watching the first two episodes, a reminder of a book that must have been on most people's reading lists. I imagine that most people read that when they're 10, 12, something like that. My children did. And then they think they've read it and they don't need to read it again. In fact, I would say to everybody, go and secure the volume and read it now, uh, because there is more to it than the 12-year-old actually would uh, see. Um, something that was rather missed out, I think, in fact, in, in the adaptation. What gives it its power, I feel, is the fear that they had in those days, late Victorian times, of uh, what in the book is called the atavistic. Dr. Mortimer has written, in fact, papers which they don't mention, one called Do We Progress? Another called Is Disease a Reversion? And they were terrified, those progressive Victorians, that lurking at the back of them was the possibility of reverting to savages. And you get later in the book, you get hints of this with the savage convict on the moor. Um, and so, in fact, it's a book which a grown-up can read perfectly well and with great pleasure. And do you feel that these elements that you're talking about are missing in the adaptation we've been looking at? Yes, on the whole, I, I thought so far they were. Um, there's, a, there's a hint of them uh, when Dr. Mortimer wants to examine Holmes's skull. I thought it was a pity that Holmes's skull wasn't examined. I suppose there wasn't time for it. But I'm sure in the book that it doesn't specifically say so. This is what happened. Well, that brings us to Holmes himself. I thought Tom Baker was a very good Holmes. <laughs> I didn't think Tom Baker was a very good Holmes. Uh, well, I didn't think he was a very good actor, really, I'm sorry to say. I didn't believe in him a lot of the time. I could see what he was trying to do. He was trying to present a rather more modern, quick, sharp Holmes. But the dialogue was against him. It seems to me that that dialogue can only be spoken in one way, that, that Doyle's dialogue, which was very, very good, simply speaks itself from the page. And 
if you try and speak those words quickly and sharply and in a slightly modern fashion, which is one way you could do it, it reduces an atmosphere of falseness. Did you not like Terence Rigby's performance of Dr. Watson? Oh, I did, yes. I liked it very much. He had that lovely, what I call, sort of piggish voice that is exactly right for Watson. I thought he was fine. Furthermore, I learned from the postman this morning that he did not actually hand over our telegram to Barrymore, but to Mrs. Barrymore. Thus, Barrymore could have been the bearded man in London, and he lied when he said his wife had not been weeping. Do you think that the series so far has been strong on general sort of period atmosphere? Does it have the right kind of uh, velvet menace that uh, I find in these stories? Or... Yeah, by and large, yes. Yes, it did. Um, I, I thought I saw one or two little uh, things that were wrong in period detail. But uh, I'm pernickety, and I don't think they really spoil things. Of course, not only the story that's well known, the whole idea of Holmes and Watson and their relationship is an exceedingly well-known one, and I suppose uh, any uh, new version is bound to be, to some extent, effect affected by one's memories of Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce and Peter Cushing and even John Woods in the stage version. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, there are sort of classic instances of this, and... and you can see how a producer director wants to get away from that and I don't know what the answer is in some ways a completely fresh Sherlock Holmes would be fine but then if they were going to do that they'd have to rewrite the dialogue except for those classic Mr. Holmes the footsteps of a gigantic count you couldn't alter that but you'd have to alter the dialogue so that it was more sayable and you'd have to take that pipe out of Tom Baker's mouth. I could only wish, from my point of view, that it had been perfect instead of fairly good. The Hound of the Baskervilles is a BBC One series. H.R.F. Keating was our reviewer, and Holmes will resume his search for the truth next Sunday at five past six in the evening. <laughs>